So yeah, all right. So is it fair to say that you are looking for what you, and you have been looking for ways to be involved in racing? Um, now, or are you just kind of like reacting to opportunities as they come? As they come, I you know I don't know I I always think like something's going to happen. I've always said that to myself. Something's going to happen. I don't know. I mean, I I don't know. I don't know what I'm good at because I'm I don't I don't think I'm good at. <laughs> I, I'm I'm not even a good dad at times. You know, I feel like I, I'm a heart of my kids. Yeah, I love them to pieces, but sometimes I'm tough. And I think a lot of it's the way I'm raised. Um, love my mom to pieces. She's still moving and grooving today. And and uh, you know, we all have we all have our ways. Everyone mm -hmm. has their ways. And I I just try to live every day. Kind of like it's and it's it's last. I still don't know where I'm, I still don't know where I'm going. But I've got a, I've got a, a cool house. I made my basement fun. Mm. You know, I built a little movie theater. I built my a little sauna room for my my wife, and she does nails and and pedicures. And I have my racing simulator, and I've got my workout room. Um. And I go do my ride drives. I I'm gone for the next month after this. And I come back and I wait for the phone to ring to say, "Hey, Jerry, we need you for this place." Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that people don't seek you out more to speak about head injuries. I, I, that's that would be cool. I mean, I mean, I don't know. Like I've I've dealt with the the guy the farms the farms. It's a it's a head injury place. Oh. I've never heard of. Yeah. It. Oh God. And, and we would. Head, we, uh, we, oh my God. We've dabbled in the head injury space. I'll, you want me to look on my phone? I'll, I'll find them on we'll, my phone. We'll, we'll do that afterwards. But like, no. you, so what have you done with them? Are you, I don't. You don't. But you're saying I, you no, you would no, be a I good did. resource. I did. I did. I went to a couple of times. I went to to talk to the people that are there who are there all the time. They're, yeah. That's their home. That's their new home after their head injury. Okay. And 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 I went there to talk to him about my story. I told him I, I was a racer and um, and got hurt. And you know, don't ever give up. Yeah. You know, keep try to be better every day. Well, I mean, <clears throat> there's that, but also there's the um, man. I, I hate to keep. I hate to go back to this. I, we've had enough people, enough racers on this show, who've been injured in a race car. And man, I'm always just, I'm intrigued with these with, with how you respond to an injury that ends your career when you don't really not only can't do anything else like you don't have that skill set you haven't been working on it your whole life but you also don't want to do anything else and so you're immediately this is the, the love of your life has been stripped from you your the, your your mental makeup and wiring has been changed and now it's like you're you're put out to pasture to figure it out I'm, yeah i'm just here i and, mean and i and so, like, like I think that there's a lot that it's you a bit, can it's speak a bit, to. It's a bit sad at times, you know. I think, and even when I, I, it's, I feel good though when I go to these ride and drive deals, and and somebody recognizes me, or somebody says, "Oh my God, that's the guy that beat Earnhardt," you know, at, in, in Atlanta. Atlanta. And I, I think that's cool. But I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I don't know what I'm, what I'm doing. I, I feel like I've got, I, I've got a, a good foundation. I've got my building uh, rented out. I've got. And I just, and I'm not fun. <laughs> well, but I'm fun at times. Like when I do <laughs> sim racing, I'm, I'll we'll laugh all night long. We can laugh all night long racing Formula Fords at some racetrack. But I'm not. But at times, I when I get serious, I'm not fun. You know, like well, I'm. Well, let's do this now. Then let's what? say like if 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 the, there's young racers out there race uh, that that are coming up to the sport. I mean, you both here at this table have gone through some serious head trauma. And are here to tell about it, and there's meaning in that. Like, what, what is that? What What would you tell young racers that you wish you could have told yourself? <laughs> have a backup plan, right? <laughs> I don't know. I no, don't. That's, that's I a don't good know. answer. I and I did. I I actually did. No, I didn't do. I did roofing uh, when I was racing cup cars. I did. I did. I bought a house on the lake, and I, me, and my dad roofed it, mm -hmm. right. and we made a show out of it. It was Michael Hogan. And, and so, um, but I, I don't know. I didn't see, I didn't think about any of that. I didn't, you, I'm sure you didn't either. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. I listen, I got, you, you gotta understand I'm, I'm in bed waiting, waking to get, waking up to go to school. My dad's starting his race car in the basement at one o'clock in the morning. 
mm-hmm. almost every, almost all the time. So I knew. And so racing was my life. That was it. Danbury Fairgrounds. Uh, I remember going to the tracks. You know, my mom carrying me there, and then, and then she dropped me off on the asphalt with my with my little car, and I'd roll my car. I, you know. We'd have races. We'd fill up the front end with rocks, and we'd toss it down the, to see who wins. Mm-hmm. There's like five or six of us. So that was my life. It was just racing. So Nothing you, else. So, so, I mean, yeah, nobody would fault you for not having a backup plan. But how many people do, especially growing up? Nobody. You're just trying to work on your primary plan, not a backup plan. I mean, plan. you do well. You do well when you get to cup racing. You get paid good. And, and um, I just wish I would have been more, a little bit more smarter. Mm-hmm. After my accident on, on how I did things, um, where I could have been really good uh, down the road. But um, I think for them is don't quit. There's no – I think a lot of it – anybody can get there. I've told this. You want to be the president of the United States. Not saying you want to, but, you know, if you – I don't. If that, <laughs> <laughs> that's, a t- that's a tough job. Um, but, I mean, you can get there if you have the drive and the ability and the, and the – and obviously the talent, um, anybody can get there. And there's so many good guys. I look at all the guys. They, uh, one of my heroes, obviously Kyle Larson. Love the guy. I'm just so fascinated. I, you know, memorized about him, at what he does and how he does it and how he can jump into a dirt late model against a hundred other guys that are 10 times more experienced than him. Yeah. And he just goes out there and makes it look so easy. He is the AJ Foy, Mario Andretti back then. Like he, like everyone memorized about Mario. Well, that's Kyle, that's Kyle Larson. Today. Yeah. No doubt. I agree. He's a once in a generation yeah. kind of guy. Did you, you have, have uh, it, I, I'm Dale, Dale's going to not be happy with me asking because it's going to be uncomfortable, but I, I'm curious when Dale, he was working at Hendrick, the same place you'd mm-hmm. worked in your past, and then um, he decided to retire because of the concussions. Do you remember, did you have a reaction to that? Did you Did you have a... a I didn't realize how how hard he hit it at, Mi- it was at Michigan? Mm-hmm. Is that what really, cut, or no? Well, so my deal was... Um, I had this really, really, really freaking hard hit in 2012 at a tire test. And um, before that, I mean, I had concussions many, many times. I remember times. Dover. Well, yeah, I mean, I I'd, I'd, that. I'd, yeah, 04 Dover. I mean, I'd had those type you of slap, con- Yeah, because you slapped hard at Dover. And Dover didn't have the safer barriers right. then. Right. But, I mean, I'd had those, I'd had those kind of crashes and – Head it, you know, get the get a concussion, ring your bell, mm-hmm. and then not even think about it. Get out and be fine. A couple of days later, you don't even think about it. Um, but then we had that right, a really, really nasty hit in a tire test in 2012, and everything I hit after that made me feel bad. So that one real bad crash, I just never got. I never give myself enough time to heal up. I guess. Dude. <laughs> And I kept going, I kept wrecking and kept feeling bad. And, and, and I just, you know, and I, I did the, I did this, like, I got like a dozen, you know, I got a lot more of concussions because my brain was still hurt. Yeah. Right. And I kept, uh, I just kept re-injuring, hurting myself over and over and over. And finally the Michigan crash was just another crash should have been just another wreck. Right. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't handle those anymore. And so the weird thing is, is that like, I mean, this has all been pretty well documented, but um, maybe you don't know, but a month after the, I, I, a month, I knew when I wrecked at Michigan, I'm like, Ugh, I'm sick again. You know, I could feel it in my head. I could feel my, I could feel the anxiety. I could feel the emotions and the, I could feel all the problems that you typically have when you have a concussion. And they went away in a couple days, and I thought, all right, just just put it in behind me and go to the next race. I don't know how much longer I can keep doing this, but I'm going to keep doing it. And uh, about a month later, I am just I haven't crashed since, right? It's been a month. My Just out of the blue, my eyes started going bad. I started getting blurry vision, like at distance. Mm. I'd always had amazing eyesight. You know, I used to joke about it and brag about it every time mm-hmm. I go get my physical every year. I'd have twenty ten, 
and uh, it was freaking awesome. And all and so my eyes are going bad. I started getting dizzy, like hit, you know, dizzy, turning corners, walk a, you know, walk walk down a hall yeah, and yeah. turn into a room. I get dizzy. I'm like, what the I hell do, is? What? I do that all the time now. I'm like, what the hell is that? That just started happening out of nowhere, mm-hmm. and I didn't like immediately think, oh, I messed my head up. I thought, what did the you, hell's going on with me? Did you do MRIs? Did you had? M- oh yeah, none, of, did, none, nothing's showing up. Did you have a road map though? Did you have a map up there? Like I had a road map in my phone. I wrote, I, I wrote notes every time I wrecked. Really? I, yeah, I was just keeping them to myself. Yeah, I I, I remember uh, Doctor Petty when he showed me my 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 blueprint of my brain. Yeah, <laughs> and he, you could see your uh, injuries. This was, yeah, this yeah. was the Darlington wreck. This was the one that when you were little. Yeah, and you can see it was like all the blood splurts, yes. like all the spots. Yeah. So I had one of those um, when I went. In 16, they this so once I started feeling bad, I went to Petty, uh-huh. and he's like, "I need to I need to send you this guy with the Panthers." So he sent me this guy with the Panthers, and in one conversation with him in 20 minutes, he was like, "You're sick with a head injury," and I'm like, "Damn!" He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "This is from your Michigan wreck," and I read him my notes and stuff. Anyways, uh, he sent me for an MRI. And that was the first time I'd ever seen my brain, and there was that. There's one spot in there from yeah. the 2012 crash, wow. or from a crash, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the guy's like, you know, your brain's great, looks great, no problems. I'm like, he's like, there's this one thing from in your past. There's this dark sort of area, and he's like, otherwise, it's healthy. There's not. Did you do the hyperbaric chamber? Mm-hmm. You never did that. No. Why? Never. Nobody ever was introduced to it. Really? Yeah. Dude, I learned I learned about that and I always said, God, I wish I would have done that yeah. after my my head injury. I would have loved I would have lo- I mean, I would have tried anything to get sure. better, you yeah. know. Um anything. But yeah, I always think about, you know, would that have would that have helped me get better with your head? And I think about yours, you know, with yeah. your head with your your concussions, could that have made your head speed up better so it healed better? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't either. Yeah, you know, I went to a doctor in Pittsburgh, and they gave me all these exercises. Mm-hmm. You know, and I I had like homework, and so I'd do this homework for about two to four weeks, and then I'd go back to him, and they would kind of run me through the ringer, making me do all these exercises, and whichever ones triggered my symptoms, yeah. they made me do those. They, that was my homework again for the next four weeks. The worst, the worst part about the worst part about what I did, I would know somebody and I'd call him by somebody else's name. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think about it until later. That's not Bob. That's George. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, and I do that a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, even I wouldn't say t- today I wouldn't as bad, but guys that I knew him and I'm calling by the wrong name and I'm thinking, why the hell did I do that? Yeah. You know, even when the phone numbers, it's 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 amazing what your brain does and what it yeah. what it says and what it remembers and stuff. What's crazy is that somebody could walk in here and hit both of us upside the head with a bat and we'll both react differently to mm-hmm. it. Like you'll do you'll have different symptoms than mm-hmm. I'll have mm-hmm. with the same exact impact or injury. Mm-hmm. And um the the wiring in the brain is like infinity. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you look inside a computer and all of that, and you're like, wow, that looks complex. Mm. Well, the brain's, you know, is an unimaginable amount of wires running in all different directions, mm-hmm. connecting to all, and, you know, and, and how we injure ourselves. Mm. It's always kind of blown my mind, but. Um, It'd be amazing if we <laughs> if we had airbags. Yeah, you I know? don't know. You, you look, I just saw something on the, motor, on the MotoGP where when you – fly off the the motorcycle or get knocked off your body fills up with air oh the suit yeah yeah that's that actually, pretty cool that actually it sounds pretty nice <laughs> um <laughs> i um you know but I, I i think i swear man i mean i'm I, my wife thinks that it's some kind of weird sign or coincidence or something that what? you're on you're on the show because we saw you in costco the other day 
But uh, I was thinking, what did I do? What did I, no. <laughs> what did I do to make him? But call when I me saw you, no, it? no shit, man. I mean, I need yeah. to say this. When I saw you, I thought, damn, he looks good, you know. And I wanted to tell you that. And I don't, you know, I think I can tell you that because I've been through something similar. Yeah. Um, I think if if Mike walked up to you today and and hadn't seen you in ten years, he goes, man, you look great. That'd be kind of a weird thing to hear from somebody. <laughs> no, I, well, <laughs> but <laughs> it was. Maybe it's because I took a shower that morning and I brushed my hair. No, uh. <laughs> I saw your eyes and your alertness, and I saw and I heard you speaking, and I yeah. remember I remember the many times that I've seen you in the past, and you're better than you've been in the I past. I appreciate. It. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and that's a that's a that's a rare occurrence for people that have been through what we've been through. You know. Mm-hmm. A lot of people do plateau after that. I, I will say, though, I, I miss it. Yeah, I miss I'm sure you do. It, I, I love it. I love I'm, the fans. It's so funny today. It's like even it's been 17 years, mm-hmm. and at least I get – I don't get a lot. I don't get nothing compared to what you all get, but I get at least three to four articles every week from stuff from fans, from people. Yeah. And it's like, oh, my God, why are people still sending That's got to feel great. All the, no, it feels yeah. good. But it's, like, amazing. Like, yeah. it's amazing what, what NASCAR did to to us. That um, you're, I know. I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, you can't believe that your career continues to yeah. have any kind of an impact on somebody. But it was bigger than, it, than we even knew it was, mm-hmm. right? What we were doing it was back, awesome then, back then was bigger than we even remember. It was amazing. Remember. I don't know. I don't know. I again. I don't watch it. I don't get into. But I still, you know, my two drivers obviously are Larson and and I. Th- I like Kyle Busch. I don't know yeah. why. He just he's a. He may be a wanker well, at times, well, but he's a hell of a racer. <laughs> he's a hell of a racer. He, is. he can wheel. Yeah, he can wheel. <laughs> but. Yeah. Yeah. Well, man, I think it's healthy to miss it. You know, I've I'm I. If I hadn't have got married, been to Indy. Yeah. You did the the five hundred. Yeah. Yeah. When were you there? I went last two years ago or something. Okay. Yeah, I worked for NBC and so, but it was my first 500. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, I did it this year. Did you? Yeah. For the first time? Well, no, no. <laughs> okay. No, I I did it for the first time in in uh, ninety eight or ninety five in with Tony Hemp, my okay. buddy from California, but we never made it. Mm-hmm. We we stayed out all night. We had fun. We partied. <laughs> Didn't get to the race. No, we never. Yeah. We got to the race finally, but it was halfway through the race. Jesus. We ended up. We were. We, <laughs> you're probably. We, you're probably not alone in that. Yeah, we had fun, but this year I did it again with Tony and, and some friends. Uh, we had some friends and all the sprint car guy friends, uh, Rat and everyone in in Sacramento, all of Tony Hunt's buddies. We did that this year, which was yeah. a blast. But uh, you talk about missing it, and and a lot of people might think and you know you talk about missing and and this was taken from you your your you know something your know, your career was taken from you uh, i feel you know i feel like that i would have raced longer had i got not gotten hurt you know um hell if i hadn't gotten married and had this new life with my girls and and all that i'd probably still be racing right mm. shouldn't be but um uh, probably still would be, um, but I think, and I miss it too, you know. But I feel like that it's a it's healthy to me. We you should miss it, right? You mm-hmm. should miss it. It should be important to you, and it should be something that you wish you could have continued to do, and that's okay, you know. Yeah. I I I won't allow myself to. Uh, I won't allow myself to be f- angry or frustrated about the what was what could have been i guess mm. or what i what i what i lost mm. now you lost a lot more than i did um you know but i i just wanted to share that with you that i think that if you if there is a way to look at it to where the fact that you miss it is actually you know, a positive thing yeah i i made it yeah i made it. it i had fun I, I, my dad my dad was in la la land he yeah. could he was amazed that his that his boy was actually running in the cup series yeah. um yeah i mean i i had fun i had a lot of help a lot of friends and a lot of people pushing me to make it um i don't again i don't know if i would have been better to stay in in the open wheel stuff you, you never know. know yeah i don't know but i mean you know the 
there was I chose that route. Um, I made a life in that route, um, you know, and I had a fun. So I wouldn't have changed. I don't think I would have changed anything in anything that I did because that was me. Yeah. I mean, you know, I do wish that maybe I had a little bit more help, a little bit more, a little bit more guidance, guidance yeah. a little guidance. My dad had it. a guy named Joe Whitlock, and that's what you needed. Yeah, you needed like a guy that had that understood the PR and yeah, understood the business of NASCAR, mm-hmm. right? He could help you kind of weave through that because you did you got thrown to the wolves you were jumped right in the fire man you know right out of the gate you need somebody to clean in here <laughs> you don't need to be cleaning I, in here why not God. i do no. i do it at the at the riding drives dude yeah. I, I listen that that's what excites me i love making people happy yeah and i think one of the coolest things that i ever did after my accident i drove for the petty school mm-hmm and I was, and they, I think Kristen or, or somebody asked me if you wanted to go do a, a uh, throw ride. And I didn't know what a throw ride was. I, I, so, but it was with Hellcats. You know the Hellcats, mm-hmm. the Dodge Hellc. Well, they invited me to go in, in Connecticut, and I was driving the Dodge Hellcats, and, and we were giving rides. And we're, they were the they were the funnest, coolest things, and they literally brought a smile to my face when I'm driving sideways at 50 miles an hour w- with somebody in the car screaming and yelling. Mm-hmm. That to me is fun. That yeah. is so. There's so much I get from that because I still have that instinct, that yeah. racing feel, and that that excitement, and uh, that's what racing was to me. So when I did those th- those throw rides, it brought a tear to my eye. You know, when I got asked to go to Japan and do throw and do uh, give hot laps in LFAs, I was literally crying in my helmet. I was like, "This is it. This is my home." And you know, <laughs> the sad part is that that was the last job. I that was the last thing I ever did. I all now I just do ride and drives. Yeah, but that it, to me is everything. That is life. All right, guys. I know a little bit about cars, so believe me when I tell you that tire pros—they're the real deal. They've got great people, great service, and they can take care of all your automotive maintenance needs. Plus, they're a sponsor of this show, so you know they got great taste in podcasts. So check out Tire Pros. Follow them on Facebook and tell them that I sent you.